It's kind of like, um, like the land of make-believe. There's no other platform I've seen that quite builds friendships and communities and common interests like Second Life does. So basically it's like you step into the TV and interact with people. Some people clap and some people shout. Second Life is a chat room with video. Second Life is like being in your own TV show, but you get to go where you want, do what you want, you have your very own camera that follows you around. There are almost too many interesting things to describe in Second Life. Like you can fly, you can sightsee to places that you've, you've never been. There are a lot of people that are willing to help other avatars learn. It lets you create anything that you can imagine. It's fun because you can do that with other people. Second Life is a 3D virtual world, which means that you participate not in the way that you participate with the, with the web, not uh, in a flat interface where your mouse represents you, but in a 3D virtual world where uh, a graphical character represents you. You actually get immersed in the world, you walk around in the world, you meet other people face to face in that world. You can do things in Second Life that you can't do as a real human. Taking off in flight and flying over things is just a very exciting experience. I've been whale riding underwater, um, I've gone um, sailing. You get to do things like decide how tall you are and how, how wide you are and what color your hair is, what kind of clothes you're going to wear. I think there's all kinds of roles that uh, Second Life could play at Penn. I think as the world becomes more and more international and you want to have geographically distributed people uh, being able to participate in events, Second Life is a great place to do that. Second Life was is a natural place for the seminar style interaction. In Second Life, I noticed that the participants all paid attention. It seemed silly to, do, to be there and, and, and to have a kind of representation of yourself and not pay attention. It seemed silly. So pretty much everybody had everything to say. Our general sense was that there's much potential to use this for a variety of teaching and learning contexts. One is the whole sense of anonymity. If you allow people to change how they look change their avatar names and then come to a common place, uh, we felt there's some potential for discussing controversial topics because you are not actually revealing your identity. In, in Second Life you can chat with other people, you can meet the native speakers, uh, you can also go to, to different worlds that look like uh, uh, famous city streets, uh, they can look like cafes, uh, restaurants, uh, museums. You can go to the Sistine Chapel, for an example, and you can focus in on the details that are on the ceiling. I don't believe that Second Life should be a replacement for visiting these places, but it can be a, a uh, vehicle for preparing students to go to these places. In classrooms, it allows for collaboration internationally. So if you have a project and you want to work with a bunch of people that are in Asia or Europe or somewhere else, you can do that. It can be part of a blended experience where sometimes you're in class and sometimes you're in Second Life and sometimes there's a sort of mix. I personally feel good about the fact that the virtual Kelly Writer's House in Second Life looks a lot like the Kelly Writer's House. I like the idea that the virtual classroom feels visually a lot like the old classroom. And I got the response that I got from my students in Second Life, alumni, former students of the university, was that they felt like they were coming back to the university. I actually think that their connection to Penn, this may sound silly, was deepened by the Second Life experience because they felt they were walking into the university. I went to the Button virtually. I've been in College Hall virtually in Second Life. I was comforted by the fact that it looked a lot like the campus, but I was home. I was, as it were, you know, in my pajamas. It was early in the morning or it was late at night, but, I, but the campus seemed like it was there. I find more and more similarities between Second Life and real life the longer I spend time in Second Life. Well, I mean, I think that uh, the work at the Writer's House was an interesting experiment um, in terms of other uh, events that sort of lend themselves to participants that don't need to be physically present. So I think there's a clear arena of, you know, having wider audiences by virtue of people feeling more present um, rather than just a call in. But I also think that there may be, um, you know, research opportunities, of, uh, you know, about how people can collaborate uh, and 
and how the, the space itself actually helps that happen. My senior project involves Second Life. I researched how people move in Second Life, um, how they interact in an emergency situation to try to validate that you can use a virtual world to run that sort of experiment. Like, can you test a safety feature or a building plan you know, with Second Life or with any virtual world? I find myself walking along uh, on Penn's physical campus and thinking, oh, you know, in the virtual world, I could touch that statue and it would tell me something. That to me speaks to the kind of expansiveness of the experience that you can have in a virtual world that you can't have in a physical world. During the, our first snow this year on, on, on Penn campus, I actually met my parents on Penn campus in Second Life. My parents were in Taiwan at that time. So we walked together while it was really snowing outside, outside of my window, in a snowy campus in Second Life. And that was quite an experience. If uh, Benjamin Franklin had been around uh, at the formation of Second Life and the building of the, uh, the Penn campus, he might have a different take. You know, what he said is that he wanted to build an institution that would teach people practically and classically how to, uh, how to live in the real world. With a virtual world, you have, you have quite a bit, a, a different set of opportunities. But you also have, I think, a way f to, to distribute uh, the culture of, of Penn you know, not only to people who have never been exposed to Penn, but to sort of remind those who have been exposed, to remind them of some shared values. Everybody knows that interacting in person is, is magical. You can make eye contact and you can read body language. No technology can really replace that. But what Second Life does that technologies like video conferencing can't do is it allows you to interact in this virtual world, in this 3D space, walking together through a garden, sitting together by the ocean, feeling the waves uh, lapping up while you're discussing an idea. And, and it really approximates some of that magic of real life. One of the great things about Second Life and virtual worlds in general is that all the content is really created by amateur content creators, by people like you, me, anybody who wants to get into it. Now some of these people have really uh, gotten very skillful and masterful at this. But it's neat to see that Linden Lab just sort of provided the toolbox and said, here, go wild. With a virtual world type environment, you can get a lot more personal interaction with someone. I know it seems odd to say that, but I think it's true. You can attend a virtual concert. Uh, I've attended virtual ballet. Uh, you can collaboratively work on problems. Um, I actually attended a concert with a friend of mine that moved to Australia that I haven't seen in six years. I think one occurrence that uh, changed the way that I was looking at Second Life was uh, visiting a, a Roman forum and just being able to walk around and see what a Roman forum actually looked like. I've been in Rome and I've seen what the Roman forum looks like now. It's a ruin. Uh, I mean, it's a, it's a very interesting to look at, but all the stones have been carried away and used for other buildings and being able to actually walk through a, a reconstructed simulation of a Roman forum was really cool. The web to me has always felt like a fairly lonely place. Uh, so for example, if I'm on Google and I'm searching for Pink Floyd because Pink Floyd interests me, I don't really know who else is searching for Pink Floyd or on a Pink Floyd fan site. However, within Second Life, if you go to a Pink Floyd space, you'll see the other people who are gathered there. So for finding people with common interests and bringing people together and having a more social experience um, with sharing information on the web, Second Life really makes it a lot easier. The most engaging part of it for me is um, the number of people in Second Life and how you can meet someone from Brazil and then the next minute talk to someone from Italy. If you try these immersive experiences, they completely change your view of what's possible. And they give people the feeling of being there together, whether they're here or in Hong Kong or anywhere else. I mean, you just feel like you're together online. It's pretty exciting. I think that just as in the American society, universities need to continue to be what they are, relatively serious places where people engage big ideas and important ideas about how we can be better all the spaces that we create, including the virtual ones, need to have us there.
My goal is for more people to join us uh, in, in Second Life, more of the Penn community to come and see what's possible. By having more people come and bring their own ideas, I think we can learn what is possible in Second Life, how in Second Life we can serve the goals of the university. Get a life, a second life.